Tarot and Song of Songs uh, that hit all the records of Odessa International Film Festival when it took two awards uh, of national competition and international competition. And uh, the film is worth it, so your applause please. Uh, we have a deal. Um, for some time I will be asking the questions and then uh, the audience, if they want to, uh, will be asking questions. That's why I, I've i just told Eva uh, that I, uh, I've, um, t uh, a week ago I watched Song of Songs and I was fascinated by uh, Eva's own uh, tempo and rhythm because when we watch modern cinema we see uh, some fashionable things, some uh, fashionable editing, and uh, modern audience uh, will uh, receive it better. So, could you tell us how? Uh, what is your opinion on this point? How you build your own uh, tempo uh, about your approach uh, to uh, script writing, uh, and what is most important when you tell the story? As for the tempo and rhythm, it's simple. I can't do it any other way. It's not just my decision or such a decision. I can't do it any other way. So we have a certain uh, pace of a person and that's it. As for the cinema, what is the most important thing? I might be quite elaborate, but uh, the thing is, uh, you really have uh, uh, this unique way of storytelling, uh, step by step capturing the attention of the audience. And uh, when you have your script ready, when you know that you are going to film it, uh, what are your uh, next steps? How you work with it? Uh, well, uh, you film it in a chronological order or you film it uh, the way uh, the uh, locations and actors uh, demand it. Well, this is a technical question and it is the question to film production. I have a film crew, the director, and uh, any and other important factors that uh, oh, we have this um, uh, calendar plan and no there is no chronological order but we have this is this, this schedule um, that is based on various factors the lighting whether uh, whether the actors are free at the time lots of factors it's a maddeningly uh, difficult process uh, so this uh, this whole thing is the responsibility of a second director. Well, I was very lucky with uh, uh, my second directors because, uh, well, up till now, um, my partners were um, were fascinating. I'm asking technical questions. They uh, might not be uh, interesting for the audience, but the people are uh, interested in your experience as a director because technicalities are often avoided and you are a successful example of it. So, um, if the audience is interested in technical things, I will tell you. So, we have a person in dark specs who's interested. Really, uh, ask me questions and I'll be happy to answer it. And, and no, it's uh, not uh, very hard, but uh, it organizes the film crew. Uh, the crew knows uh, what is going to be filmed. Uh, the costume designer knows what costumes to prepare. Um, the uh, cameraman knows about lighting and uh, the um, and the cast uh, knows when to come. Uh, this whole pr uh, organization is quite complicated and this calendar plan helps us a lot. 
and I know that there are people who work without schedule, without plan. I'm not such a person. Uh, so it's how important for a director to control everything. So the uh, previous master class of Peter Weber, uh, well, we heard there that there are two approaches to uh, filming. Uh, there are directors who control everything. Um, for example, Abbas Kiristami, uh, well, uh, he told that he uh, was like a football coach. He uh, made the team and let them play. And I am a director who um, who tends towards control, who likes to be in control. But I need to be prepared because I am quite anxious. I have to be prepared. It would have been terrible uh, if I came to a film set totally unprepared. And it's uh, quite impossible to be prepared enough and total control has uh, horrible drawbacks in itself and I'm trying to hold myself back a bit because I understand that freedom, not only freedom of actors but other uh, members of film crew can also uh, contribute to uh, the film and um, the person uh, who likes technical details are, is applauding us. So uh, freedom uh, in cr and creativity is important, uh, are important aspects. Uh, you have to feel oh, who uh, is uh, capable of it. I'm turning towards control and the, the happiest moments of the film in the process of filming. are due to improvisation by actors, but I insist on avoiding it, but I have to acknowledge that, yes, uh, when they have freedom, it's better for them. Could you tell us about the happiest moments in Song of Songs? Well, uh, Song of Songs was one big happy moment. There was no absolute freedom here uh, day to night. No, uh, no freedom. But, so you were a dictator. Uh, like a Pinochet. Well, yes, uh, just a bit. You have the right to be like that. Good. Uh, other technical questions? Uh, you, under you have to understand that the filming process is not a dem it's not democracy. Uh, there is no place for democracy in the filming process. That's how I see it. That's how I think. But again, creativity of every or almost every member of the film crew is extremely important. And my task is to uh, ca capture this balance uh, uh, between uh, my control and their freedom and my own freedom. Quite curious, this uh, technical question in your uh, films, uh, for example, House with a Turret and Song of Songs, uh, for the most uh, part, uh, children are uh, the leads. It's quite hard to film children, and you, as a controlling uh, director, how do you work with children? How do you get uh, what you want from them? You know, yesterday I heard this question, and I don't know how to answer it really it's uh, it's not that it's hard to work with children well it's hard to work in general not only uh, in the filming process but it's quite hard to film whoever that is with someone it's easier with someone it's more difficult but in general it's quite hard how to shift between all these things well I use my intuition uh, it doesn't matter whether it's a child or an adult. You need uh, an to find an approach to a person. It doesn't mean that uh, if the person uh, is a grown-up, uh, they will be more open to you. 
it's not like that. So how do you hold the casting sessions? So uh, you um, you see that you need a boy for a role with uh, such a face and and then you have the selection, the auditions. Well, they come with the parents, grandparents. So you see young people uh, out of who you have to select uh, somebody. What principle do you use? Because uh, uh, the um, non-professional actors, younger actors, uh, so children, are quite fascinating in your films. They play important roles. And how do you understand that this particular boy will fit in the, into this role, uh, well, whether it's uh, on the railway station or in the hospital? Well, there are certain criteria that uh, the child has to conform to. So you see the face, the, uh, the height, and uh, the thing is that I work, I'm quite happy to work with, assist, uh, with casting assistants who, uh, who understand me, and uh, they brought me children uh, a lot of good children, and I had the chance to choose uh, good, uh, you mean uh, quite well, uh, the one that fit me. So they'll get nice presents for the New Year's because they're good behavior. I uh, know, sorry for interruption. Yeah, uh, it's fine. I like it. it it's, it's okay. Okay, you had great casting assistants who brought you beautiful, great children. Yes, it's true. Actually, what when it comes to when it comes to casting in Odessa, that's an unforgettable impression. Yeah, tell us more about that. There, there are like blitz acquaintances, like short acquaintances for five minutes maximum, and people leave a huge impact in your in your soul, in your understanding, and due to. Due to tactfulness, I cannot give you quotes. I cannot, but maybe something, something that impressed you, something that's um, off the record. Please, could you share it with us? Yes. Um, no, I can't do that because I'm sure that these people are present here right now. Uh, but I memorized some of the things that happened due, during the casting. Like sometimes they bring a, 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 a boy named Soma, and they tell us and they tell you he's so talented. Please take. Yeah, they bring pictures from childhood. They bring diplomas. Yeah, like a person, a child went to a theater or film school. Yeah, the posters. The leaflets, they bring every sort of thing, whether the child, they bring me info on whether the child uh, plays the violin, for example. How do you know about the violin? Well, a decent boy needs to be able to play the violin. I'm talking about adults now, not children. Oh, I was, I suppose you were talking about children. No, no, it's all, it's all mixed up. It's, no, people come to me uh, who are old enough to be our fathers, mine and yours, and bring their family picture albums. And casting can be can be such an immense pleasure for somebody, but not for me actually. For that you have assistants, right? Casting assistants. And I'm so grateful to them because what makes me think I'm, like I'm not happy with casting because I'm, I suffer when I see a wonderful person who doesn't fit this movie as a as a cast member, and it's the um, it's a task the casting assistant to explain to this person that he or she just doesn't fit. Thank you, but that's that that's it. And what the assistant actually does to do that, I, I don't I don't know I don't know how he does that. If we get lots of people who don't fit, I try. I start to panic and to suffer, and think everything is um, everything is falling apart. And then, the perfect person comes for the role, and everything uh, once goes to its place, and the whole and the whole crew goes. Thank God. How do you 
how do you not succumb to desperation? For example, in Odessa, we get colorful characters who do not fit your, your, your movie, and it goes for a day or two. Where do you get the power not to, not to become desperate and not to... That's what that's what's interesting for me. How does the director keep the keeps keep sure keep, keep sure that he will do a good job as a director? And how do you avoid these inconsistencies? I ask this question daily. Actually, how do I stay secure? How do I avoid insecurities? Well, actually, I can I. I, I didn't avoid them. Sometimes I said, only Michael Bay, who directs Transformers, is, has no insecurities at all. Well, actually, I would I would argue with that because the crew, when we work um, together, my crew might be sure that, that I'm the person to, to shoot Transformers as well. Yeah, according to Shalom Aleyhem's works. Right? But it, it, it's just... It's just the show is just um, the thing that might seem to people outside, but it's happiness bordered by desperation. Yeah, as a as an Almodovar's movie, the women on the border of a nervous breakdown, right? It's a great example. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm talking lots of lots of smart things into this microphone right now. Uh, right. What I was wondering always. Our movie industry is still in the in the in the starting sphere, in the starting position concerning the, produ the, the, the the producer sphere. We're not Bollywood. We're not shooting 500 movies a year, and also in Hollywood, in Nigeria, they shoot also short bloodshed movies who are quite popular that are quite popular. And um, wh where was I? Uh, concerning. Let's switch up the microphones and just speak like without them. We can do them with microphones on as well. So the producing system in Ukraine. For example, you have the same producer for three movies, Alexander Tkachenko. So how how the producers here work with the directors? Um, what's um, what are the problems of Ukrainian producing? Activity. We already mentioned Italian producer Dino De Laurentiis, who produced movies by Fellini, for instance, and so he was quite a control freak. He didn't give his directors to cut to edit to edit the final movie material. Whether it was good or bad, we don't know. Maybe Fellini had the right to edit his own movies, but what do you think is the problem of Ukrainian producing industry, and what um, what experience do you have in this sphere? Okay, in Ukraine. We have one basic problem that's characteristic for everywhere. Well, maybe, I don't know. Uh, there is not enough funding for the movies. That's it. The, the funding is quite meager. That's, it's, it's no secret. But uh, lately, the situation has been improving, uh, frankly speaking. That's, that's the complicated, that's the... Um, the peculiarity of that, the difficulty, and all the other things are mere nuances. And to say that in Ukraine everything is much worse than in Europe or Britain would be an overstatement. I shot movies in conditions that my European colleagues could could be just jealous of. Yeah, please tell us about it. For example, I had uh, great relations with my producer that we worked in this in a like in a dialogue, but there was no pressure upon me. We had mutual trust, mutual um, belief in, in in each other, and that that the chance to do what I want and in the way I want it to be done. Of course, I was limited by um, time and money, but in terms of creativity. It was, uh, I was, I was the one who was responsible for everything. I had no one to to delegate to delegate it to to, and nobody was pushing me anywhere, or pressurizing me. It was it's an unprecedented situation for Britain, for example, for England. 
in Europe and Germany also they don't pressurize you that much when the final cut goes to the to the director but there are certain nasty moments that make you think yeah let's talk about nasty moments in Germany yeah in Germany for instance yeah let's let's extrapolate them into it yeah, into the general picture um, all right for instance um, there are lots of people there who who are part of the process and everybody feels they need to be creative and and they push their creativity into other people's realm into the realm of a director of the screenwriter and they keep interfering and telling you what needs to be done what needs to be changed what's the drawback of your work and the director and the screenwriter are forced to to listen to these recommendations they are and sometimes the idea gets so transformed that it's not even recognizable anymore and you don't know anymore why you started to make this movie in the first place and with the budget that I had uh, on this uh, movie it was sufficient for a movie like that we had as a result with that funding in Europe we would it would be enough for for a short movie uh, no no a short movie but a much more a, 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 a much cheaper movie in terms in terms of costume in terms of decorations please let's switch off our phones one more nasty moment in Europe is that of course uh, in Europe uh, professional film industry workers earn a, a lot more than their colleagues in Ukraine uh, yes, you you lived in Germany. You know the European movie, the, uh, the, the the movie, the film system, how it's made, how it's done, and we all understand that due to certain reasons, it's cheap to shoot movies in uh, Ukraine. Why is that? Is it? Uh, maybe it's political. Maybe you won't be uh, you won't be willing to answer this question at all. But why do European and American uh, directors don't uh, don't shoot movies here, as in Czech Republic, for example? Is it due to taxes or or to country management or to internal management? Do you want to talk about that uh, or? Okay, uh, I'd rather not. Uh, what's also important for me when I watch the Son of the Sons movie, I um, caught myself thinking that there was an important topic, uh, the Jewish topic. Uh, that was touched upon. That's a real serious question. We have a, our country. Our country is quite anti-Semitic. If we if we see on the, if we just take a glance on the surface, when the Orthodox Jews uh, are the main characters of the movies, uh, of the movie that we show, uh, and we show their their everyday lives. So we so we don't make them we make them the main characters the central characters, and you choose them as a central topic and their experience as well and you tell us about the love and their and the uh, what happens to, to to them and these tragic moments of the of the Jewish history. How did you choose this topic and how did you how did you get to talk about that so openly because it's quite serious. Well, first of all, anti-Semitism is uh, actually present in every society, in all time, at all times, and every place. It it happens. In Ukraine, as I was working on the movie, I didn't encounter that. I didn't encounter anti-Semitism in any serious, to any serious scale that would impress me, like negatively. I, uh, I had, I had nothing like that. I encountered nothing like that. I can't remember that. I'm not. I'm not understating. It's just. It's just how it was. When I chose the topic of my work, the Jewish topic was not what drove me. I was driven by the works of Shalom Aleichem, the Son of the Sons, as it's called. These works, from their creative side, impressed me a lot. And. I felt I was compelled to to work into that direction and I allowed myself this freedom 
And if I insist uh, on the fact that there is no difference, there is, on the other hand, Shalom Aleichem talks about Jews, about a uh, Jewish town, and for me, uh, in some aspect, it's uh, quite close. Uh, those characters that we see on the screen are quite familiar to me. A lot of things um, could be irritating, and they're portrayed ironically, but this thing is mine and while choosing this topic uh, Jewish topic wasn't the key factor there and besides um, uh, there was such a strange moment when I suggested Alexander Tkachenko uh, this is a general producer of one plus one and TV channel when I suggested him at the moment, I was interested in Gogol, uh, both in Gogol and Shalom Aleichem. And w together we decide that it w would be uh, Shalom Aleichem and about Gogol. Uh, for now, uh, there is no Gogol in my artistic plans. Well, uh, so, uh, but before that, uh, uh, you wanted to work uh, with this topic. Yes, it was a passing theme. I, I was interested in it, but it passed. If you, t if you said uh, that uh, you uh, were going to uh, film Chanel or, uh, let's say, uh, Dead Souls or, well. I'm going uh, to uh, film how um, Ivan Ivanovich quarreled with Ivan Nikiforovich. So, uh, so this is a comedy of comedies. But yes, that passed. Uh, for now, I'm not interested in it. And while we're on the topic, well, uh, about uh, we'll leave your uh, creative and artistic plans for the audience, but. When we're talking about genres, uh, what is your opinion about um, pure genres? At the river, mm, you see that uh, this is a drama. And House with a Turret uh, is, is, also, is also a drama. Uh, there are uh, almost, well, uh, comic moments there are almost non-existent. But if we're talking about Song of Songs, one of my favorite moments is uh, where a rabbi, at the very beginning of the film, when the uh, main character uh, has just come to study, and he's got uh, small stones and buttons, he's forced to um, uh, to put it on the table. He uh, he slips off his shoe and probes uh, the, the floor with his foot. And uh, what is uh, your opinion on pure genres? And how do you add some comical elements uh, even into dramatic stories? As for the pure genres, well, uh, I like them. I really like them. I like a lot of things, but it doesn't mean that I can do it. Uh, do it as purely as they come, as, uh, for example, a pure comedy. Uh, I doubt that I would have been able to do it like that, or well, pure comedy or pure action. Uh, well, uh, just, for, just a bit, maybe yes, but, but it seems to me that uh, someone has to offer you a good uh, uh, script for a blockbuster movie, uh, because you're a great director. You're a perfect director for a blockbuster movie. You, because you follow the script, you follow everything. I'm really sorry. Good. Good. Uh, well, uh, you're not bored, I hope. 
good. Uh, really, uh, how did you uh, th think of the moment when a rabbi uh, just is feeling the treasures of the boy with his feet? And I imagine myself as a rabbi and... Uh, and I think that Shilovsky portrayed it like that. When he uh, saw it, he said that it looks like as if Maya Plisetska, the ballerina, doing it. Uh, uh, well, he's uh, got his this huge belly, and uh, it would would have been hard for him to reach for these uh, buttons and stones with his hand. So. I have another strange question. When I watched uh, the house with the turret, uh, I thought, uh, well, I, I tried to seem more uh, clever than I am. Uh, I thought of uh, theater, of uh, symbolic decorations and sets like beds or uh, all this uh, this is made in black and white and what I'm trying to ask you is how uh, this uh, theatrical aesthetics how close is it uh, to you this theatrical aesthetics and and what is your approach to the filming? What about theatrical aesthetics? Well, I notice that uh, condition, uh, conditional uh, aspect is quite important for me. I do not uh, really appreciate realism. I need uh, some... Um, some abstraction. Uh, maybe this is the main question for me in my profession and in my approach to work. This uh, degree of conditionality, this no, uh, well, I don't think so. So you do not like it when uh, I like form. This is the thing. I like uh, the things. I do not like uh, shapeless, shapeless things. I try to give form to something, and this form corresponds and is connected to the contents and form comes from the contents and contents from the form there is a certain interconnection there is a process and my task is to capture this edge and then we have the result and every director has uh, sees it differently I can't say anything about it. If you uh, see a film on the screen, you uh, you have your own opinion uh, about my own aesthetics and my tendencies of um, of what I have in in my head, um, even more objectively than I can do it. Uh, well, uh, it's easy to give a diagnosis to someone else, and it will be more accurate. And another question. I like uh, how you make your shots. Uh, the scene in uh, Song of Songs when the father of a main character is reading uh, the letter from the relatives uh, and uh, about assaults on Jews and uh, we see the camera moving and we see the grandfather, the mother and how uh, much of this comes from the director of photography and do you uh, trust your di director of photography because he's a good guy and he'll do it the way it should be done and but you say no I, I want the camera move at the moment no uh, my uh, director of photography is not just a good guy he's a fantastic guy I trust him infinitely and I appreciate him really and uh, and yes and I tell him what to do so you trust him but you tell him what to do but what can I do this is the truth 
Uh, in the Sleepers, I worked with him uh, uh, during two of uh, the in two of my films, and uh, the more uh, and yes, I'm fascinated by him, and it seems to me that it is uh, quite a precious person. Uh, so you uh, gather uh, precious people around you. It's important for a director. Uh, there are directors who like to change their film crew. So they worked with one good uh, d uh, director of photography, then they move on to another one. And how do you build your um, uh, and organize your work? You know, I made uh, doc uh, two documentaries, oh, three documentaries and three feature films, and uh, I do not have this huge experience. Uh, so, uh, in my experience, uh, at the river was uh, was shot with one uh, DOP, uh, the house with the turret with another, and we continued working with him in uh, Song of Songs, and I do hope that we will continue working together and. Uh, I remember that uh, the director of photography told once that uh, cinema is uh, a form of collective art. And at the beginning of my professional career, I, I, I would have been uh, surprised. But today I can say yes. It's quite like that. Uh, this is a collective work, it's collective art, and I am a director who heads uh, this crew and we understand that the one and the same film crew will work uh, differently under a different direction and the result uh, will be also different and that's why the responsibility for uh, the artistic value, let's say it like that, or the flop, the failure, lies on me. So every creative member of my team can say that, well, what do you want? Uh, that's her fault, yeah. It's her doing. Look at the film. Yes, it's. I see uh, this is uh, the treatment we get. Oh, so we are the good guys. Yes, I had this experience. I was quite lucky with the film crew, and it was uh, quite mutual. Uh, but uh, this film crew w was, uh, wasn't was like that at once. In my debut film at the river, um, it was hard for me to work. I, I wasn't quite used to working uh, with the team and heading the team. I wasn't quite experienced and uh, the people had to uh, obey me and uh, those people who work for 40 or 50 years, well, quite ancient people, you can call them like that. Well, maybe they were filming in the 19th century. Yes, not long before uh, the Lumiere brothers invented uh, the cinema. Yes, uh, so in relation to me, they, they were quite experienced, but there were people, uh, experienced people, who uh, who had uh, lots of li life and professional experience and wonderful experience and horrible experience. And me, I was, I came and I started ruling uh, this whole process. Also, uh, partly, I wasn't lucky with part of the of the film crew. Well, you couldn't tell when you watched the movie. Well, of course, one shouldn't be able to tell that. Yeah, it didn't. It just didn't add up. The house with the towerette was a lot, lot better, and the same team that shot the house with the towerette it was almost the same. Uh, the, the the main part of that of that crew went over to Son of the Sons, and there I felt quite naturally. And what comes next, I don't know because people. The crew, the crew gathers for for certain periods of times, and one cannot tell what happens next. And sometimes I'm afraid that the peak of our alliance, of our work together, um, is already over. Maybe uh, we're 
don't don't be don't be thinking of such silly things don't don't okay we have a uh, does the director have to be an extroverted person? Of course, we understand that each person is an individuality, but if he chooses the trade of a, of a film director and he has got a lot of uh, actors, the crew, the team, uh, everybody's um, circling around around this, should the, should the director be an extroverted person? And if you are an introvert, uh, should you change yourself uh, like by force and become more extroverted? Yeah, I think you should just you should just communicate a lot. Yes, of course that's inevi inevitable. But should a director be an extrovert, like Kosturitsa, for example? Uh, yeah, of course I'm joking. What 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 kind of thing is that? And uh, no, I don't know. It depends. For some people, that's easy. Yeah, but what about you? Is it easy for you? No, no, it's not. I'm not introverted person. I'm a very sociable. Um, person um, but in a word um, actually working with a team of people everybody knows that it can be awesome but there could be certain peculiarities it's like with every other occupation um, I'm not the permanent boss of this team that's uh, my work actually includes me sitting alone at home and thinking uh, thinking like conjuring my my script and then when the preparation process uh, is underway I work in the in the large team and it contrasts a lot sometimes gets real huge pleasure from that being being with, uh, with, with, with a lot of people and that but I'm not actually very happy about that. You're so delicate in you know choice of words. No, I'm not being I'm I'm not being polite. It's really so. The people that I uh, happened to work with, I um, appreciate them a lot, and I'm not forced to change myself brutally to to be able to to, to talk to them, to work with them. That's people with whom I can share my passion. Those people share my principles my opinions and that's immensely precious so on the other hand communicating all the time is a lot of uh, is a lot of pressure uh, like a lot of physical pressure for certain people lots of people mentioned that European movies or American movies should have should have quotas for female directors that's a, that's so sexist of course but still I'll ask this question we as uh, former Soviet countries the Ukraine as well is uh, quite a patriarchal country but we also know that the women run the run everything that happens here the bosses are male but the females are the one who take the decisions and when we're talking about movies if we're talking about shooting films, what's your personal opinion based on your experience? Do you have to surmount any sexism? And is there any changed attitude towards you because you are a female director? Well, it's not that I know what it's like to be a male director. But I think the gender, the sex of the, uh, of the director is irrelevant. Actually, I never... Uh, I never ran into discriminating situations. I never experienced that I had in unpleasant situations, but I didn't link that, I didn't refer that to gender, to sex. Uh, it's just uh, the limitations that my imagination set upon me. Maybe it, maybe it's true, maybe it was, maybe it just was my imagination at all, as well. I think that film, the director's gender is irrelevant. When they say female movies, I feel that's un unpleasant for me. When I feel the gender in the movies, that's and that happens. It means uh, like it pushes me off. It's not only the female movies, but with male movies as well. When you can feel what the gender of the director was. Um, that's that's unpleasant. These are like such subtleties, but when you understand what the gender of the director was, that's physiologically off-putting. The films, the movies should be 
should be pretty self-explanatory. So you didn't encounter something like something like, oh, what is she, is she capable of? What can she, what can she create in terms of movies? Mm, I don't know. Perhaps, perhaps, and perhaps I that even goes on. Uh, oh, by the way, concerning the communication, maybe it still goes on. I understand that this people might be skeptical about me, about uh, about my tempo, about my rhythm, everything you said you appreciate about my work, the theater aesthetics. Some people are um, do not appreciate that at all, and I understand that's uh, that's a natural thing, and everybody will will find what they need, what they like. But I don't. I'm not compelled to to speak to people who do not feel my work is not their cup of tea. I don't think that criticism is constructive as such. If you're not asked, if if they don't ask for your opinion, and you and you still criticize, that's that's not constructive criticism. That's just a it's just a feel like a, a willing that certain people feel to to do. Okay, let them do that, but don't force me to participate in that. All right. <laughs> I'll ask one more last question, and we'll get to questions from the audience. And I think those questions will be a bit smarter than mine. I uh, I read that Friedrich Bernstein gave you a recommendation when you were selecting the script for your first movie for your first feature film he gave you an advice that you should take a ready ready made script because you'll get more room for creativity yes that's exactly what he said that exactly his words why the three of your works the three of your films why are they the screenings of literary works well actually i followed his recommendation fully and now i realized how right he was about that maybe not for everybody but in my case uh, it was true it was absolutely applicable and i need to fall in love with uh, certain literary work and and it ignites me like it inspires me and and it carries certain cultural codes that i need to decipher and uh, and discover and this deciphering might might actually be part of my creative work, right? Um, yes, for me, that's, that recommendation worked. Uh, what about the load of responsibility, that burden? Lots of people also read this uh, literary work. For example, the same Gogol. Imagine how many people have, sir, have their own opinions about Gogol. Um, well... What 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 then? I mean that's bold to screen to, to make a screening of a ready-made and uh, also a popular literary work that enjoys respect and recognition. Well, of course it's bold, but on the other hand, it's uh, there is there is an advantage uh, for me using a uh, recognized work. For me, that. The most important thing is to fall in love with that piece. If I manage to do that, there is hope that I might create something new, something something appreciable for other people. So it will be a child of love, a love child. Okay, we have a certain question for the... Uh, time for questions from the audience. Please raise your hands. See you. I'm... Yeah, I'm waving my hand at you. My question is on movie uh, The House with the Tower Rat. When we see the the gaze of the boy through the looking glass, through the through the glass, your inner that uh, yes, this this inner shot, this uh, the, the, this picture of this shot. What what did you what did you imply when you were, when there was a retorted image there was an effect of the retorted image via the glass through the glass yes that retortion what did you mean by that what did you want to load that picture with we don't see him we see what he sees right so he's gazing through the window 
and some windows some glasses and some windows are like that if you live in the uh, in the old premises and if you look uh, onto the world through such windows you'll see the same that's not retortion effect it's just visual you just visually you, you just gave a visual and there was no inform no additional loading information loading to that to that shot to that picture right the next the next what we see is the boy himself through the window I think that a compliment to any to any director sorry for interference it's okay you might go on so the distortion there was no distortion of the boy's image see the outer world the same the same glass but there was no retortion in that case so was there no effect was there uh, the was there a your unique approach or did you forget did you just forget to make the retortion effect or what was that i don't think i forgot let's let's say it was that that was a peculiar decision of mine as a director okay yeah thanks let's the ne next question please my name is kirill i'd like to thank you for the film i uh, watched yesterday the house with the tower at uh, Thank you. I'll be frank about my emotions. I'm an extroverted person a lot. <laughs> so this film uh, touched my soul, touched my mind a lot and I I found it found it difficult to watch it to the end and uh, only thanks to my friend who called me and like um, took me off um, uh, away from the room I was able to do it, make it to the end and I had the feeling that uh, I went to the seaside and I wanted to forget this film because it made me mad, it made me angry. Like seriously, I got, I got seriously mad. I think this film shows things that are already so, so forgotten in today's society, in modern society, that when you see them on screen you feel that uh, as if you're visited by aliens. And uh, what's your question? No, I'm just expressing gratitude, no question implied. Let's okay. We have two wins here. Let's let's shift to this win. Okay. Hello, my name is Leona. I'm an aspiring director, a beginning director. So, and my question is: You mentioned that you worked alone for a cer certain time before, as you prepare to the uh, t to the shooting process. And how long is this period? How do you start it when you fall in love with the piece? And is the, do you have any certain algorithm or a structure of your preparatory work? And um, when, it will, when you create the script, when you work on that, please tell us. I don't think I'm able to go into much detail now. It's so complicated and I have lots of doubts. I won't share all of my experience right now because it might be a just a, like a bad experience. But anyway, uh, when I have a piece that I like, something starts to happen within me. And I search for the basic idea, for the core idea of what I need to do, why I need to make this movie. You know, this, this core element. Then I write the script and I do lots of watching over uh, and gathering information, accumulating information. I watch people, I watch life as it is, as it flows, because the shots, the pictures, or the the ABCs, the elements of the uh, of the visuals. I am um, at certain point. I understood that I need to write down everything that comes into your head, everything that you come to like, all of your impressions. I am talking to you as a colleague, right? Can I? Uh, can, is it? Am I right to do that? The more you you write down the more you'll be able to 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 watch um the more intensely as i think and after the script is ready you do the picture by picture creation i do that a lot i do the boards i do the storyboards when i meet the team the basic things are already known to me already understandable and how do we put that to life 
uh, that's our joint decision. Sometimes I can foresee what type of scene will be this or that. Why? What kind of core do we need? That the essence that we need to 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 find. You're searching for that essence and attempting to imagine to visualize the the picture, the sounds also necessarily. Yeah, the sound and so for the sound is primary for me, and then it leads me to the picture. There are certain my own principles that I wouldn't like to give away just n now. Uh, well, it, it is a secret to certain amount, or maybe somebody might find it wrong. But I have uh, my certain personal principles that I use when I do storyboards. What picture is correct for me, and is it? Doing everything on voluntary uh, is not is not applicable in art. Freedom is all fine and well, but being excessively voluntary is bad. You need to be scared of that. There should be this certain internal logic within what you do, not physical and physical rules like in realism, but in the internal logic that you need to adhere to that the artist needs to adhere to. I read it, uh, that's what Tarkovsky wrote. Uh, one of his books is called, what's it called? Uh, uh, the Time, the uh, Tarkovsky's book, uh, The Time in Certain, The Time with No Movement. Okay, I am, um, this lesson was valuable for me. I won't, I won't repeat that because you know that you have the secrets, your own secrets. But how do you watch people, actually? What do you do? Do you gather um, um, some minor impressions that you got before you shot the movie? Or do you go anywhere specifically? Or if you know that you have an important scene at the railroad station, do you go there exactly to watch what happens there? Well, it depends. Uh, do you go at the rail? Do do I visit the railroad station? Yes, I do. Do you visit the like the uh, shop or store or anywhere? Yes, sometimes you can uh, you can watch a certain scene um, at a store, then go to the railroad station and like shift the scene there. Do you actually know that Yevhen Neyman will go to the to the to the zoo to the dolphinarium? Yeah. Well, actually, my shooting point, my watching point is Odessa as a whole, as the city. When I'm in Berlin, it's I find it um, more complicated to watch, to watch people and happenings. In Ukraine, watching is easier because it's, uh, because because you know, the essence of, of what happens is more lively, is more alive. Yeva, I'm here. I'm here. Hello, my name is Albert. I'm a screenwriter and I'm a budding screenwriter. Uh, I have to warn you that this uh, this person, Albert, is a screenwriter. He asked the question, and you have to know uh, Christian Petzold in advance whether he is uh, ready to sell his soul to the devil if he knows um, that uh, he'll film the best film of his uh, in the world. No, I want to ask you a serious question. And what was his answer? What was he said that if the devil will be a, g a good enough uh, seller, then yes. So we touched upon the bu budget deficit in Ukraine. We know that it's quite non-existent in Ukraine, and uh, there is a, an anecdote. Uh, there is a story that um, uh, James Cameron um, <coughs> mortgaged his house to finish uh, Titanic. So I'm a wedding screenwriter. I'm I'm ready to sell my house, to mortgage my house, my family, and my future. Children. So, is there anyone who's willing to buy Albert's children? No. So I'm I'm willing and ready to do it for a good movie. It's not funny. It's quite an essential question. Well, you know, 
you see, I would have been ready to sell some jewelry. Yes, but I'm not going to tell you right now what those things are. Well, not jewelry, some precious things. Uh, so, uh, please uh, speak into the mic because there is a simultaneous translation in progress. Don't forget about it. So, about uh, what I what I I'm ready to give away. I felt that uh, the best things, the the best things that are given to us in life are given freely or uh, for a minute sum of money. And if something costs too much, then there's something wrong with it, something not quite good. And I think that, uh, well, it deals with, uh, with this um, uh, giving away thing and budding to обязательно должен что-то пожертвовать. На самом деле, как оказывается, как я наблюдаю своих коллег, иногда ты иногда вот жертвуют, ну черт знает чем, да, и потом все равно ничего не происходит. То есть жертвой тоже, к сожалению, не все можно купить. Даже самой дорогой сокровенной жертвой, да, ну вот вот. Оказывается, нет. Да? И, и никто даже в том-то и дело, может быть, вы и готовы, но никому это не надо. Да? Nobody needs it. No one will ask you uh, your house. Oh, if you want to sell your house, you're welcome. If you think that it's important because, well, God, may God help you, but this is a risky endeavor, and uh, there is something uh, biblical about it. We tend to this giving away, but uh, the more you give away, uh, the more you uh, receive. But this is a philosophical uh, question. And uh, I have this uh, philosophical point of view. And, and maybe um, we'll ex change places. Well, maybe uh, the answer will be quite different. Uh, well, I've got one. Hello, uh, my name is Sergei. And the question about uh, collective art. Could you tell us uh, whether uh, the actor, to what extent the actors are your um, uh, co-creators, uh, or um, or the uh, the most important part is of this creative process is taking place on set. A lot depends on the actor. If the actor is very good, uh, then uh, maybe he or she is able to give me more than I can offer. Uh, there, there are lots of things going on on set. Uh, some artistic moments start uh, before uh, shooting, but um, maybe, uh, but yes, uh, certain thing, things, yes, but uh, this is uh, the answer to the first question, because I'm going to go into details uh, on one hand and the other hand, but Um, so, uh, who's got the mic? Uh, hello, I want to ask you a question, a difficult question. It's not funny. Maybe it's uh, not, it's an uncomfortable question. And I'll, uh, st I'll, st I'll start uh, somewhere far off. Mm. 
let's see. Uh, now in Ukraine, uh, we have a very compl complicated political situation. And uh, as I understand that the, the themes of genocide, racism are quite close to you. And as you've mentioned, uh, there is a notion of freedom and the notion of everything being allowed to you and if we start to um if we try to uh, move into the modern times where we have this uh, notion of uh, Bandera the hero and there is also the uh, notion of Babinyar and would you uh, take up uh, the filming of uh, a movie, maybe a documentary, where the children of those um, grandfathers meet uh, on uh, different. Uh, they meet on this field, but they come from different sides. Would you uh, take up this complicated topic to show t them naked, unembellished? Uh, well. The question of form, how would you show this meeting and this clash? And as I've told you, I need to fall for something. I'm a director, I'm not a politician, I'm... And I don't work with these things. I simply uh, don't take up these things. I don't deal with them. Uh, of course, I have my own pain, my own uh, point of view, but it's an enormous responsibility to broadcast the text on screen or in print. I do not, uh, I don't take up this responsibility. I'm not interested in it as an artist, and I'm trying my best to be an artist. Uh, the art is not just uh, something decorative. There should be some depth to it. And uh, for now, uh, politics, uh, I think, does not have it, have something to inspire me, to inspire me uh, for action, uh, for filming. Uh, uh, it does not inspire a sympathy in me, but, well, it does not inspire me for a shooting. Hello. Uh, so we have this gender imbalance. Uh, let's uh, give the mic to the girl. So ask your question. My name is Dima. I'm a budding uh, director. And uh, uh, the question of planning and comfort, what uh, fil uh, sh filming schedule is most productive for you? Because uh, various schools teach uh, differently. Uh, so we have 12-hour 12, 12 shift or um, how do you, uh, what is your opinion on extra hours? Can we do without them? And, um, well, we can uh, film 50, 15 seconds, well, but maybe we will lose more. Well, uh, you see, technical questions are quite interesting. Uh, so, yes, we had 12-hour shifts. Uh, it would have been better if they were a bit shorter. But certain shifts, well, extra hours, we uh, avoided them. We didn't have them. Uh, well, sometimes it's uh, quite more productive to have extra hours, but uh, but we tried to avoid it. And uh, in a day, uh, uh, we uh, filmed differently. It differs from uh, director to director. If you have a chance to stick to your schedule and make it with quality, then do it. If you um, if you take some extra hours, it doesn't mean that you will get quality for your work. This is quite personal and I think individual. 
you know, uh, I'm quite uh, cosseted and I had uh, some fantastic conditions, working conditions. And the next question goes to the lady here. Please give her the mic. Hello, Eva. My name is Sveta, and uh, you talked about inner logic. And uh, to what extent do you trust this inner logic? Because uh, filming here in Ukraine, you have to have this because uh, your opportunities are limited and f uh, funds too. And uh, how often do you have to? to listen to this inner voice and but in the moment when you don't know what to do to what extent do you trust your uh, this feeling in you so you're asking about the artistic side uh, of uh, the filming process or uh, the production side. So artistic uh, side uh, rarely de deals with money, uh, with uh, Ukraine, and uh, very often artistic impotence happens because because you just couldn't. Um, money or the European Union wouldn't have helped it. No Bollywood or Hollywood would help. So this is camera, this is uh, the actor, this is the director, but nothing comes out of it. So I do not think that it has something to do with money. I guarantee, I can assure you that Europe has it bad. It's uh, in Europe. It's much worse with working conditions for the director. N not everything is perfect. Well, uh, people have to figure it out, and here uh, it's more lively and freely, and maybe it's even more talented. When I see uh, the films by young directors, yes. As for the inner logic, I try to somehow uh, uh, bring uh, this up in me. Uh, um, and I was quite impressed uh, by um, this Ukrainian film. It was done honestly, uh, with great dignity and respect toward people and characters and the audience at the same time. And uh, there was this sophisticated work and everything was easy. And uh, I was quite impressed uh, by the movie Sheriffs uh, uh, by Roman Bondarchuk. Hello, my name is Sergei. Uh, could you tell us how exactly you understood that you were um, able uh, to film uh, your own feature film? Because when did this uh, moment come when you understood that you could engage the audience when this very first opportunity came? Well, I was uh, waiting for uh, funding for five years for my uh, first feature film. And when the opportunity came up, I just grasped it. The uh, Киношколе – это профессия, ну, это профессия, это же не то, что там по, по наитию, опа, я вроде как, нет, это профессия, да, ты потом заканчиваешь высшее учебное заведение, выходишь профессионалом, и тебе надо работать, и ты боишься, ну, ну ты же работаешь, все. Следующий вопрос. 
Здравствуйте, меня зовут Дарья, и я, у меня к вам несколько вопросов. Вот современное общество более ценит э, фильмы в цвете. Вот скажите, почему вы решили снимать э, «Дом с башенкой» в черно-белом цвете? Это было возвращение ну, к старому формату кино или чтобы больше показать эмоционально фильм? И второй вопрос, вот ваш творческий план, да? Вы могли бы поделиться несколькими ну, задумками, возможно, если это не секрет, что бы вы захотели в будущем снимать? Спасибо. Откуда вы знаете, на что реагирует как современное общество? Ну, вы вот... представляете часть современного да. общества, да? Современное общество состоит из многих частей. Одна из этих частей – это вы, и у вас ваше мнение вот такое. Ну, короче, понимаете, ну, люди и... все разные, вкусы разные. Кому-то я делала черно-белым, потому что я посчитала, что то, только так может быть правильно. Фильм делала я, я режиссер. Да, ну, оператор был со мной согласен, то есть мы, оказывается, мы говорили, говорили, а потом мы просто переспросили друг друга, мы же говорим о черно-белом, да, и просто продолжили говорить дальше. Вот так это было. Э -э да, что, что было следующее? Про Творческие черно, планы. Про черно, да, да, подождите, про черно-белое кино, но на самом деле, мне кажется, ну, не, не совсем правда. Да, большинство мейнстримового кино, наверное, снимается в цвете. Но если мы посмотрим там, на какие-то успехи, там, не знаю, фильм «Артист», э, э, немое кино, ну, в смысле, стилизация под немое кино голливудское, но черно-белое, или фильм, э, вот недавно, который номинировался на «Оскар» польский. В... Ида. Да, 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 «Ида» — это тоже черно-белое кино. То есть понятно, что, ну, мне кажется, да, что не совсем правильно говорить о том, что ну все да, смотрят то, только так, цветное. Вот такой вот тезис такое, современное общество, а вы что же? Ну, я тоже, между прочим, часть современного общества. Вот. Можете вообще, будет, наверное, будете смеяться, но я тоже вот тут же с вами, вот ваш современник. Вот. И, и я не уникальна вот в своих желаниях и в своих вкусах. Э, я не одна. То есть... Можете рассказать о каких-то вещах, которые вы планируете сделать? Потому что, ну, понятно, это всегда всем интересно. Я хочу снимать детектив. Класс. Угу. Серьезно? Угу. Прям самый настоящий? Самый настоящий. Так, это какая-то... Хорошо, я буду вас задавать какие-то вопросы. Там, где мы уже пересечем границу, где вы не можете отвечать или не хотите, это классическая история или мы это... Мы можем переходить к следующему. Хорошо. Вопросу. Евгений, я сценарист и режиссер из Киева. Вопрос, у меня два вопроса к вам. Первый. Отснят фильм «101 минута». Это полный формат, да? И мы попали в видеорум. И вы, вы я хочу... В видеорум? Пом... видеорум. видеорум? Да. да. То есть мы не попали в основную программу. И мне важно получить, может быть, от вас ответ, что дальше делать с этой картиной. И второе, очень было бы важно, если бы вы с этой картиной познакомились, лично мне, как режиссеру, было бы важно получить от вас ответа, как от профессионала. Ну, спасибо большое за доверие. Конечно, с удовольствием можем обменяться контактами. Я посмотрю, мы поговорим. А на первый вопрос? На первый вопрос, что делать с картиной, которую да, не взяли? которая сейчас, да, не взяли в основную программу. Одного фестиваля? А, ну, мы заслали на серию... Ну, следующих мировых как бы, фестивалей, но пока мы не получили ответ. Вы не отчаиваетесь, не вот отчаиваетесь. что. Не отчаиваетесь. То есть фестивалей есть очень много, и не исключено, что я тоже получаю, все получают отказы. Все. Ну, то есть я вообще не показатель тут. Получают отказы все, кроме каких-то совсем уж звезд. Да? Куда-то берут, куда-то не берут. Да, кстати, и звезды тоже получают отказы. Вот. Так что может так статься, что еще где-то возьмут, а может статься, что не возьмут. И? Но это не ну, конец ничего. света. Ну, ну что? Ну, Вы... Если будет возможность, делайте дальше. Спасибо. Угу. Друзья, следующий вопрос, пожалуйста. Меня зовут Владимир. Я из славного города, где проживает ваша маленькая звезда прошлого, ну, фильма прошлого года, Женя Коган. Он да. просил вас... Просил меня вам привет передать. Спасибо. Ему вот. тоже. У меня вопрос такой. Вот у вас оба фильма, ну и спасибо большое за вчерашнее удовольствие от просмотра вчерашнего фильма. У вас оба эти фильмы, это фильмы сняты глазами ребенка, ну так или иначе. Вот вы в своих творческих планах дальше планируете продолжать этот же стиль, то есть фильм детский глазами ребенка. Я Ева только что сказал, что детектив будет Нет, снимать. Ну, детектив не глазами ребенка. Он ну, вряд ли глазами ребенка. На самом не, простите, деле, вот перед... этот вот Эдуга Рампо. 
по произведению, которого я собираюсь снимать. Ага. То есть, ну вот вы все издали, все ясно. Да, он писал про ребенка детектива тоже. А я вот не выбрала. Хорошо. Извините, ну, мы вас перебили, может быть, у вас еще да, вопросы? У меня да. был вопрос все-таки не... Ну да, вы частично уже ответили на предыдущий вопрос. Просто планируете ли вы продолжать вот эту тему, ну не касательно детектива, в общем, детское кино, мир глазами ребенка, то есть через мир восприятия? Я детского. не знаю, я еще не знаю. И потом, вы знаете, я так долго жду финансирования обычно, что, наверное, Женя вырастет. You have to understand that I have been... Uh that I studied at film school, this is a profession. You, you don't just uh, do it based on your intuition. This is a profession. You graduate from a higher educational establishment. You're a you, are, you become a professional and you need to work. You are afraid, but yes, you work. And that's it. The next question, please. Uh, my name is Daria. I have several questions to you. The modern society appreci uh, more appreciates uh, um, uh, color films. Uh, so why did you decide to film a house with a turret in black and white? And the second question, your creative plan. Could you share uh, some ideas of what you would like to uh, film? Uh, so, uh, how do you know uh, what uh, modern society thinks? Uh, you are just on a part of this modern society. People are different and tastes also differ. And I made a black and white film because I thought that uh, this is the only correct way. It was my film. I was a director. Uh, my director of photography also agreed on it. So we asked each other, we're talking about a black and white film? Yes. And we continued working on it. Th uh, that's how it was. And uh, as for creative plans, uh, black and white movies, most of mainstream films are shot in color, but uh, you know about the film, uh, the artist, this um, uh, silent film uh, stylized for um, uh, Hollywood uh, films uh, of um, the early 20th century, and uh, it's not quite correct that everybody watches only color films. Um, you don't, you can't generalize. I'm also part of today's society. Uh, maybe you'll find that funny, but I'm here, the your contemporary, and I'm not unique in my desires and my tastes. I'm not alone in that. I don't stand alone. Can you tell us of things that you plan to to do? Because it's always interesting. I'd like to shoot a detective story. Is it serious? Yes, uh, a true detective story. Okay, I'll give you certain uh, questions to push you to certain information. When we, when we get the limit where you don't, is it a classical detective? Story? Okay, next question. Thank you. My name is Eugene. I'm a scriptwriter and a director from Kiev. I have two questions. First. When we have a movie already shot, a feature film with 101 minute of length, and we we have a video, we have a we have the, f the film in the video room. We didn't we didn't get into the main uh, program of the festival. I'd like to get an advice from you. What to do next with this feature film? And it would be it would be a blessing for me as a, as a director for you to, to to get your impression your opinion i'd like you to watch this film of course we can exchange contacts and i'll watch your movie and then we'll talk about that and the first question what to do with the film that wasn't uh, wasn't be, didn't became become the part of the festival only one festival well we sent it to uh, to a a number of the following world festivals don't get desperate there are lots of festivals and sometimes uh, of course everybody including me gets rejected so don't don't use me as um as a basis for, uh, sometimes 
Sometimes films, even star directors, often um, sometimes get their films rejected. So um, sometimes your uh, your film might be accepted, might be not. It's not the end of the world. You'll get if you have the chance to work further, then do it. Um, friends, next question. My name is Vladimir. I'm from the great city. Uh, of the star of uh, one of your prior movies, Mr. Zhenya Kohan, uh, he asked to give give his greetings to you. My question is the following: Your both movies, thanks for the yesterday's pleasure from the screening. Both of your movies are shot from the viewpoint of the child, in this way or another. In your further creative plans, do you plan to to do the same? Yeva just said. No, the detective will won't be shot through the eyes of the child. Okay, the cover Poe, Edgar Allan Edgar Allan Poe, whose works, whose works I plan to to screen. Um, he had he has certain works, certain pieces about the child detective. I had a question. Well, and to some point you answered my my question do you plan to continue this topic the the uh, topic of shooting movies through the eyes of the child i don't know yet and also i'm i'm work uh, i i wait for the funding for such a long time that perhaps genia will already be an adult by then by uh, by the time i get the funding for my next movie no i'm just interested in the history of uh, of, of films of of um, the world history, no children's ch a children's story is not a principle for me. Um, your movies are not something like rooted into the film movies, but why the Ukrainian and Russian uh, film uh, film world has a lack of uh, children's movies? Why in Odessa recently they shot a children's film? Quite a well, maybe I'm not aware of that. Thanks. Next question. My name is Arena. My question is the sound of the songs and the uh, goggles pieces are so different. Why did you want why did you, these two branches that are so different uh, why they were part of your choices? So, how do you how do you interest it in both goggle and shalom alehem? Right now, Shalom Aleyhem is absolutely a priority, not Goggle. He just pushed Goggle away from my priority hierarchy. These are just two of my favorite writers. That's what they have in common. And for me, they are huge, impressive artists who had artistic freedom, which is quite important. And there is much that way we can learn from them. Next question, please. Uh, the person with the, you, please. Yeva, please tell us, uh, do you want to try yourself as an actress? Do you have any suggestions? Lots of important famous directors have cameo roles, cameo parts. So like a certain uh, two minutes, something like that. Do you want to try yourself uh, to be seen in your picture, in a motion picture. No, I don't want to. Do you want to, like Mr. Rezanov, like director Rezanov, would you uh, be seen sleeping for three minutes in uh, in your movie? No, I don't want to be an actress. Thank you. Thank you. This is so awesome coming from the audience. Why don't you want to be an actress? No, you just need to do your own thing and not interfere with other people's trade. I want to be the director. Next question. Hello. My question is the following. The uh, tower, the house with the towerette yesterday. I watched it. It was interesting. Thank you. The boy was absolutely touching. A great kid. And he looks awesome. And he's touching me. He touched me to, up to the verge of tears. My question is, I'm, I noticed a certain certain principle was it you was it pre-planned or was it uh, random the boy when he went to the post office to the uh, to, to the hospital he, uh, he he kept saying goodbye to everybody and nobody replied and the only person who replied to him was the blind person on the train was it 
was it uh, did you do that on purpose did it unite did it unite these two characters their tragedy on the physical level and on the psychological level see i forgot this and you reminded this uh, reminded me of this you're so attentive to detail um actually i wanted this child to be a very polite kid have you seen the, uh, yeah i wanted uh, it was important for me to, to, to for this child to be polite also uh, how did you work with this boy in the scene when his mother is dying and you don't show you don't show the mother just the child and his emotions did you rehearse that did you have a conversation with the boy or did he do that on by himself how how was it how was it crafted no uh, it wasn't his own piece of work it was our joint uh, piece of work mine and his also the name why the house of the house with the towerette the um, synopsis said that the boy just remembered that he left his mom at the, in the city where there was a house with a tower at. I just didn't see the house. You didn't see the house? Well, maybe I didn't notice that, but there is no, there was no emphasis put on... Uh, actually, there is the house, and this is the house that I meant. I don't know. I don't know how I can show it more vividly. Just the synopsis said that the only thing he remembered was the house with the tower red. There was a feeling that uh, he would uh, return there as an adult. It is absolutely. It was an autobiographical thing. Uh, by there was a story by Friedrich Korenstein. Korenstein, um, the story, the eponymous story, and it was a biographical episode to a certain point. And I'm not sure exactly but I'm uh, I think he doesn't know exactly where his mother is buried he just remembers that the city where she lies is, has the house with the towerette and and finding her is, uh, is another thing I don't know maybe he knows maybe it's just what he told me so actually this is what I remember wonderful people are so attentive while watching your movies we have the last question please yes me I'm here yes please raise yourself uh, sorry for uh, perhaps for a naive question you often say that you're lucky you're lucky with its crew with the assistants with the actors you also said people often sacrifice things and it doesn't work out and it my question is maybe maybe you have maybe you have a secret maybe you know already the secret that uh, that gives you the blessing of the universe in your work how do you do that what helps me all right my upbringing has been quite helpful i came here and it's not decent to complain about your life in public that's the first thing another thing I have no specific secret I suffer just as much as the person uh, as that uh, this um, young man who who didn't who got his film rejected or the, the, the man who doesn't know what else to sacrifice or this young lady uh, who uh, who is not sure what to start with actually I can share the suffering from all of these questions, from all of these problems, I have no specific secret, but I've been uh, really lucky lots of times, and um, maybe I've been even more lucky than than the more um, recognizable, more respected colleagues of mine. And on my creative path, on my professional path, have seen careers end without even having begun in the first place. I know I could have shared this professional destiny, but I didn't. That's quite a personal question that you're asking. We won't talk about that, right? But I'm sure that Yevan Neyman will be lucky lots of times. And also she'll shoot the detective based on Edgar Allan Poe. Thank you to Miss Eva Neyman. Thank you very, very much.